Today we want to take a look at a scroll saw and a bandsaw and give you some idea of which one might be more appropriate for whatever you're trying to accomplish. So we'll compare them and we'll contrast them, show the similarities and the differences. This is a scroll saw. It's a very basic scroll saw. It's probably $100 or $125. Uh, you can buy a much more elaborate, much more expensive one depending on what you're trying to do. Scroll saw is a reciprocating saw, which means that the blade goes up and down. So there's an arm on the top and there's an arm down at the bottom. And so the blade goes up and down repeatedly, up and down, up and down, and saws through the wood. Uh, it, you notice that the blade is not huge. It's not meant for uh, heavy material. It's not meant for terribly thick material. So generally you're covering cutting thin material. The other characteristic of the scroll saw that makes it very useful is that you can cut very, very tight turns. For instance, if I wanted to make a wooden jigsaw puzzle, I would use a scroll saw because you could do the, the tight turns in that scroll, in, using the scroll saw in the wood to produce something like a jigsaw. The limitations of it, as we already said, the thickness of the wood, the material, it cuts mainly wood. It's not particularly useful for cutting other materials. And the other limitation is this throat and the size of the throat. So you can appreciate that if you had a very long piece of wood and you were trying to make a turn, you would bang into this and be unable to do that. Hence, it limits the size of the material that you can cut the tight turns in. So let me just turn this on and give you an idea of what it sounds like and what it looks like as we cut. So you can see that it doesn't go very fast, moves kind of slow, and uh, it can't cut thick material, but it does give you the ability to get uh, tight curves, which can be very useful. I actually could cut uh, curves much tighter than that if I wanted to. Also, I don't have the smallest blade that you can get for a scroll saw on here now. This is about an eighth of an inch in width. Uh, you can get them much smaller than that and then really cut very tight circles. So let's move over to the bandsaw and talk a little bit about it. Here I am at the bandsaw. The bandsaw, as you can see, is a much larger instrument uh, tool than the scroll saw is. Uh, the way it works is it has a blade, which you can see here. This is a very large half-inch blade. It's about as large a blade as you can put on this scroll saw. Uh, and the size is determined by the front to back uh, measurement. You can, uh, the way the bandsaw works is that that blade travels across a wheel on the top and another wheel on the bottom, and it's a continuous circle going around. So if I turn it on, you can see, you can see that the blade is going around, moving continuously from top to bottom, and so the teeth point down. Uh, the limitations of the saw, as you can see, you could cut materials that are as thick as this opening. And what you want to do is you want to adjust this so that it's closer to the thickness of the wood, which gives more support to the actual blade of the bandsaw. So for cutting something this half inch thick like this, we would move this down and adjust it to where it is now. Uh, a limitation of a bandsaw, much like the throat of a scroll saw, the other side of the blade, the other side of the blade is over here. And so the width of the wood that can go through, that can pass through here, uh, can't exceed the distance from the blade to this over here. Also, if you're trying to turn a circle, which you can do, a curve, 
uh, on a bandsaw, again, you're limited by your material potentially running up against it. We can also mount this fence onto the bandsaw so that we can push material through it and have a very consistent cut that's nearly as good in terms of uh, keeping the width constant as you would get on a table saw. Uh, it, it, as I said earlier, it can cut turns, but depending on the size of the blade, you are limited in the radius of the curve that you can cut. So with this half inch blade, I might be able to cut a curve that's uh, a three or four inch radius. You can cut a variety of materials with a scroll saw, with a bandsaw, and it's a very hardy saw. The other thing that you can do is you can take a thicker piece of wood and you can adjust, adjust this such that we can do what is called resawing. Resawing means I take a thick piece of wood and make a thinner piece of wood. So I can take wood up to the maximum thickness here and I can push it through this way and end up with a thin piece of wood. Uh, so I can take three quarter inch wood and make it into half inch wood or two inch wood and make it into one inch wood, etc. That is called resawing. So this saw can do cut through a lot more different materials. It can cut thickness, uh, quite a bit more thickness. It's, it's sturdier and can cut beefier projects, but it's also limited in the radius of curves that it can cut, and it's limited in the width of the wood that you can pass through it. So we've looked at both a scroll saw and a band saw today. And the differences are very apparent. The scroll saw is generally used on thinner material. It's used for very tight turns, and it's used for making smaller crafty kind of projects like, say, Christmas ornaments or a jigsaw puzzle. On the other hand, the bandsaw is much beefier, much larger. It can cut uh, thicker, uh, bigger material. It can cut very thick material and resaw it to make thinner material. It would be used to make bigger projects where you're trying to actually do joinery and put larger pieces of wood together into your project. Uh, we have videos and articles on precisely how to use a scroll saw and how to use a band saw in more depth than what we've covered in this comparison that we've done. The links are down below, and of course, as always, be sure to hit the subscribe button if you like what we're giving you.